Welcome back everybody. In this video I'm going to be discussing why I make GB Studio games and why you should too. Or at least why you should consider making smaller games and thinking critically about which engines you use and the scale of your games. Especially if you are if you're learning to make games or you don't have unlimited free time to waste time uh, developing tools and stuff. So if we look at back at my old games, um, if you've uh, seen my videos before, they're quite small. They're very small games. I often made them as part of game jams. Um, and uh, they taught me a lot about making games. And uh, to those of you who have never finished a game before, small games are your lifeblood. They are what keep you going, okay? So if you make a single small game, you are now a game dev. But if you haven't made a game and you're still creating games, um, you know, that that's kind of up in the air. Are you a game dev? Technically, you're developing games, but you haven't uh, released anything and you haven't got any feedback. Uh, obviously, you could have your friends play and stuff, but uh, it's not the same as having random people on the internet give you their true and honest opinions. Another reason I use GB Studio is because you don't need any coding experience. If you want to make something happen, then you just you know, you click on whatever you want to make happen and then you can, you know, basically if you don't know what, what to type in, if you just kind of, you obviously should do the research first, right? You should uh, uh, go on the documents, but let's say I want to move this guy. I type in move and uh, obviously I would want to probably use one of these um, and depending on if I want to move it to somewhere or move it uh, in relation to where he is right now, then I would just have one of these. And obviously, it would take me a couple tries to uh, see which way uh, he's going and which, what I want him to do. But it's very easy without any coding experience to just start using GB Studio and make something. And another reason I love GB Studio is because it has this sample project. It has examples of how you can use what's already in the game uh, already. And so if I press play, I would play through this um, and we can have a look, right? So obviously, this is a top down scene where we interact with stuff like we're playing Pokemon or Zelda. Uh, this one's a platformer scene, so it's like Mario. This one's a shoot 'em up I can't think of any shoot 'em up games, but it's obviously classic like Fluffy Bird moving right. We have another one down here that has ladders, and we have another one here that is uh, to do with pushing blocks, which is obviously a classic uh, staple of Pokemon. And it's all tied together with simple triggers and change scenes and dialogue text. It really isn't that complicated. Oh, we also have a point and click thing, which uh, shouldn't be ignored. Point and click scenes are very useful for menus and stuff. Uh, so with all of this in mind, we kind of already have an idea of how you can make a game, right? Uh, it's very rare that a game would have all of these things. So it's a great as a sample. It doesn't really, uh, you know, it, it shows you everything you need to know. Another thing I like it is because of how quickly you can make artwork. So if we have a look at the sprites, you see they're all 16 by 16, or when they become, uh, you know, like a moving thing, then they become uh, three and or six. Uh, so if we have a look at these, yep, three is an actor, and then six would be the uh, a player, the uh, player, you know, animating as they move, um, and the fact that it's so small, it's quicker to make. Let's say if it was 64 by 64 instead of 16 by 16, technically that would take you four times longer, right? So let's say this took you 10 minutes, it would take you 40 minutes to um, to make a bigger character. And the longer you spend on this stuff, um, often the less time you're actually making a game, right? Uh, and although I am an artist, I put myself an artist and I make a lot of artwork, um, the quickness of making artwork is what makes game development more efficient. And another reason why I like GB Studio is because it makes games for the Game Boy, which is amazing. Obviously, um, when I started making games in GB Studio, I didn't really mind that it would make games for a Game Boy or what. Um, I just used it as a tool to put, the, put my games in the web browser. So all my games are playable in browser which means that random people on the internet, like I said at the start, can test my games, give me feedback, and I can easily send it to one of my friends who doesn't have a Game Boy, and they would they would be able to test it for me and give me their feedback. And for those people online who do have a Game Boy, they can test it on their hardware and give a more, uh, you know, retro-experienced um, feedback. 
Uh, and now that I have a Game Boy, now that I have the cartridges and everything, it's I actually enjoy playing my games on a Game Boy. And I almost feel like it makes sense to make games for old uh, consoles because so many people have them just stored away or maybe on a shelf or maybe they do play them. Um, but if the but if we forget about these consoles, then they're just going to end up in a landfill somewhere. Um, so making games for them is keeping this stuff alive and making sure that we're not wasting the stuff of the past. Um, and obviously, like I said, this the retroness is cool. Like playing it on a Game Boy is it feels unique. You're actually holding something in your hand that either you made or that someone else made, and it just works. It's it's uh, it's very satisfying. And the fact that we have the possibility to publish it and put it on a cartridge, there are a few companies that do it for you, but you can also do it yourself. Um, that is very appealing. Uh, normally, if you sell a game, let's say you, say you sell it on Steam, Steam will take a cut of that. And obviously, any, anyone you work with will take a cut, and you have to take a cut to tax. And if you make it yourself, you have to pay for all everything you do in order to create and, and you know sell the, the thing that you're doing it. But you're doing it yourself. That's what's so amazing. Uh, and the fact that you sell it physically means that people can trade your game and it can have a life outside of your sales. Uh, and although people will often, I've seen uh, people on Twitter sharing fakes of their games that they've found on on eBay, it does mean that your game is alive and people are wanting to sell it and think it's valuable. Um, and obviously, I haven't done that yet with my game. I My games, like I said at the beginning, most of them are made for game jams and I don't I don't think they're worth, you know, putting onto a piece of plastic that, if it's not a great game, might end up in a bin somewhere, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm reserving that for when I believe in a game. Uh, and I have felt the the push to do it with Office Combat, but I do feel like it's too, it's too short of a game. But that physicality means that you can actually sell stuff physically, which is definitely unique. If I was to make this in Unity or in, or in the Unreal Engine, I would have to either, you know, sell up for, like, through a switch store or you know through the playstation store and or if it would have to get on disc i would have to go through another company like i don't think there is a way of um, me doing that myself which is amazing that it exists for a nintendo game boy i love that um and the final thing and the reason why i use gb studio is that it's i like a, going back to the no code point i have learned a lot about coding just by doing this the idea of using if statements um, and like having making sure that it's like laid out nicely, commenting some you know commenting your work so that you can read it better. Um, it like those kind of practices are now built into me that I didn't have before, and I feel like I'd be more comfortable moving forward into a code-based engine. Uh, and this is where we go on to what I consider bad about GB Studio, uh, and some of the reasons why I might want to move into a different engine in the future. So small scale uh, and by what the, by this i mean um the games you can make obviously they can be quite big i've made videos about how big you can make games and there are quite some quite big games um but once um you get quite far uh let's say you have loads of stuff going on in here it gets very hard to read this stuff and obviously you can you can close it up and you can do whatever um but it's not the same as you know having a full screen of code right in front of you and having you know different code bases on the left of you, um, it's it's just it's not perfect for making big complex games. Um, and in my previous videos, I've talked about how like the minimum size of GB Studio game is like one two eight I think kilobytes. Um, while in other engines that's thirty two kilobytes, so you can fit it on much smaller cartridges. The the importance of that is that it's actually cheaper to get smaller cartridges. Another thing why people might not like this is that it doesn't support multiplayer. Obviously, there could be support for the link cable in the future, but it's likely that that won't be anytime soon, and it still doesn't like support online multiplayer. Like if I had this game, I couldn't do it um, myself and play with like my friends or whatever online in the same game. And obviously, with Unity and Unreal, you can just buy a you know an asset pack or whatever it's called. Um, in order to get that functionality built in. And other engines have that pre-built in that you can just have multiplayer games, um, which obviously GB Studio doesn't. And for those of you who have a have an idea of a career in game development um, in mind that involves making you know popular uh, 3D multiplayer games, this obviously probably won't appeal to you very much. Uh, and 
um, like moving on, like obviously uh, thinking about this is a beginning of like, you know, getting the grips. Um, like GB Studio can teach you a lot about, you know, how um, games used to work, right? Like the idea of tiles, the idea of, of actors and of triggers and of collision. Like all of that stuff is very fundamental to game design and is actually quite important if you want to move into a 3D engine, uh, thinking about how things link together and everything like that. But arguably, uh, you would want to learn coding. You would actually want to physically learn coding, and this doesn't let you do that. It lets you learn the fundamentals of scripting, um, but it doesn't actually teach you a coding language. So things like the Game Boy Development Kit, the GBDK, um, well, obviously, if you're if you're working in it a lot, then technically you'll be learning uh, the C language, right? Uh, but in this, all I'm learning is the fundamentals of scripting. And since it is such an old device, the Game Boy, uh, and these like fundamentals are so fundamental here, um, it's very restrictive. The limits are very restrictive, uh, which means that you know at the bottom of the screen here, you're not allowed more than 30 actors in this scene, uh, which might not seem that bad, but if we if we like wanted to make I don't know uh, chess or something, have all of the um, with all of the chess pieces, um, then it it might not be um, possible. I haven't obviously done that before, but if you watched my video on um, creating blackjack, I couldn't do it because the screen size was so small. Um, uh, so yeah, so this 4x4 four four stack of things might not display correctly, it might not work correctly, and will definitely slow down the game. Uh, and and with all of the uh, functionality of all of this, um, how the uh, text stuff works, it might not be perfect. It will not be perfect for every single game. Obviously, it's more suited to RPG games, um, so it definitely won't fit everybody. It's very restrictive. And the final point why is it might not be great for you is monetization. You could see uh, the Game Boy scene as very small. Um, honestly, I see it as very strong, and arguably strength is, is more important than, than size. Um, I don't think that making, you know, like mobile games is particularly uh, good for our society, uh, mainly because of the monetization in it is normally based up upon um, sketchy practices where you're kind of taking advantage of people's time um, and you know, if you value your time more than um, your money, then maybe you will uh, pay for stuff in the game. Well, I don't think games should be like that. They should be an actual experience that you shouldn't be paying to skip past. Um, but if you are trying to make a game that, um, you know, reaches a bigger audience and or, you know, you want it to be free but also make money, um, then, you know, like a mobile game would be better and making it in Unity might be better. Um, and yeah, you can't have monetization in a Game Boy game. That obviously, that's that idea is silly. I won't lie to you. I haven't made almost any money off of my games. I've made less than a hundred dollars on itch from my games. Um, obviously, I have them all play in browser for free, so there's no reason to buy my games. Um, but obviously, every now and again, somebody does purchase the ROM of the game. And obviously some of my games are completely free, so there is no intention for the, the user to pay me any money because it's free. And often on itch, people are intending to just not pay money. They want to play a free game, and that's why they're on itch. Um, so obviously itch isn't the best way to earn money. Um, arguably it would be through physical sales or if you were to put it on Steam, uh, like that game Dedius did. Uh, I think there might be a couple others as well, but yeah. Monetization is a huge part, and uh, obviously I don't get paid on YouTube yet. I don't have a thousand subscribers. I don't have whatever it, you, it needs to, uh, whatever you need in order to become monetized. Uh, and instead, obviously, I get paid by other people. I freelance for them. I help them make games and get paid a portion of the sales. Um, so arguably, GB Studio isn't very, um, isn't ideal for starting out making games, but if you want to make a small game like I did on my first one, uh, a nice little story game, it's absolutely perfect. It's very easy to begin, the artwork is quick to make, and uh, the simplicity of it means that you will not be, um, you know, looking up tutorials for just simple things like uh, a menu. Maybe you will uh, if you're at the very, very beginning, 
um, but it's very easy to just do it yourself. It's uh, very cut and dry. And the sample project has most of this stuff already built in. You can click on stuff and already see if it's useful or not. This save point, for example, becomes so simple to just copy and paste around um, that there is almost no uh, issue in developing, right? It's just, if you wanna, if you have a very linear idea in mind and you just wanna make a story game, then go ahead, right? Uh, it only becomes when you start thinking outside the box that it becomes a bit more difficult and your creativity will start having to take over your, your way of thinking. Um, but yeah, that is some of my reasons why I make GP Studio games and why you should too, but also why I'm thinking of changing into a different engine. Before I leave, I just want to remind you that ideas are very easy to come by and it's knowledge of whatever you're using and uh, will and motivation and creativity in order to create it that is, is important, okay? So as you can see here, there's this, um, there's this idea generator from another YouTuber. Uh, and it, you just click through and it just automatically generates ideas, right? Game ideas. Um, and some of them obviously don't make any sense. And any logical person looking at it would say this is, it wouldn't work. But some of them actually do make sense and they're very good. Um, so obviously, if I just click through, this you're witnessing ideas being generated and they come very easily. But creating the game is the hard thing. And that's why I prefer making small games um, because like you don't know how good the idea is until you actually try and make it. And if you're going to spend four years making something, then it might fall apart like at the very end. Right. Uh, but if you want to make a week, spend a week making something, then um, it would be very easy. Right. Be extremely easy to uh, to just make a game in a week. Does it work? Yes, fantastic. Let's monetize this. Let's sell this, and/or let's create a sequel. Let's, um, you know, expand on it. Let's make it better. Uh, and if it's if it's bad, then you've you've practiced your game development skills, and you can move on to the next idea. You could also uh, think about, oh, this almost worked. Let's change this slightly. Um, and so yeah, ideas very cheap. The actual motivation and creativity of the game is very hard to come by. Um, and obviously this is, if we look through the top games made with GB Studio on itch, um, mine aren't at the very top. Um, you obviously there's some of mine here. I've made a, I've made a lot of games, right? Like I, I would say this is a lot of games. Um, it's only like five maybe that really matter. Um, but either way, they, they are on itch and they are noticeable, right? Um, and it didn't come easy, right? Uh, so my first game was among, I don't know, maybe 50 games that existed on GB Studio. And I don't think it was anywhere even, it didn't even rank in itch, I don't think. Um, but obviously slowly as you release games and you participate in game jams and you, you know, you share and you talk online and with your friends in real life, then, you know, people will start following you. People will start like taking notice, right? Um, people will start coming back to your games and uh, and commenting what they thought of it, and uh, you know it becomes it becomes part of the community, right? So, for example, Opossum Country that this is a kind of old game and it's still at the very top, and it's because it's a great game. It's because it's a fantastic game. I remember this playing this game uh, when it first came out, and uh, I really enjoyed it. It's very arty. Um, and Neighbor, Neighbor is a fantastic game. A year after almost made me cry. It was so good. Um, and obviously Unearthed, I've talked about that before. That's a fantastic game. Uh, and then here's Take It Racing 2 down here. I didn't expect it to be up uh, this high. But yeah, so when you make a game, don't expect it to be up here at the very, th the very first time you make a game. Expect it to be, you know, all the way down here. No, you know, sorry if these are your games, but um, just keep making and, you're, and you'll slowly go up and up, okay? Um, Look how many there are. It's fantastic. And some of these games, I bet you, are amazing. But nobody knows to play them because they've never made a, made a game before, right? Um, so just keep making games. Don't don't stop making games, otherwise you've lost, right? If you stop making games and, and you give up, then you've lost. Um, but if you keep making games, then fantastic. You actually, you're going to be moving up. The, the only way is up. You can't get worse at making games. Um, that's it's kind, of, it's kind of a silly idea. Uh, so, 
yeah, I'll uh, put my patrons up on the screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are very important to, you know, the game dev community. I'm hoping to uh, get a new mic with the new money that you guys uh, have been sending me. Obviously, um, I'm using this headset that I got quite a while ago, but hopefully I'll be able to actually buy a good mic. Tried getting one not too long ago, but it, it just was not good. I had to send it back instantly. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and improve my quality. I might start showing my face on camera a bit more. Um, the only reason I haven't is because I've got a, a bad laptop webcam. But yeah, I'm slowly putting in more and more time and effort thinking about how I can improve with you guys. And on that note, remember to like and subscribe, comment on what you'd want to see next and what you thought of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.